guys, it's Dana, and today I'm going to show you how to make Guinness beef stew. So it's Irish beef stew made with Guinness beer. And I learned my recipe from a lady while we were in Ireland, and she gave me all of the ingredients so nothing is missing, unlike my Italian family, where they cut things out of their recipes when they provide them. Um, so you'll be making this beef stew. It's fast and easy, and you can actually just put it inside of your Instant Pot. You can cook it on the stove in a Dutch oven. That word makes me laugh all the time, but I do that as well. But I'm a little pressed for time tonight. I have to get dinner ready. So I'm sharing what I'm doing with fondue cubes. I'm using a pound and a half. I'm using about three medium-sized potatoes. They're scrubbed, leaving the skin on. Celery, I've used six sticks. You can use six to eight. I've also used about one cup of carrots cut them, cube them, whatever you want to call it, one full onion and garlic cloves, three of them. I will be light with the salt, light with the pepper, not too into that. You can season this more or less and that can of Guinness beer. And optionally, you can add um, smoke to this, the flavor, but you know, we don't always do that. So I'm just going to let this meal speak for itself. Super easy, super good. And you can add optional peas, so don't forget that. All right, I'll show you how to do everything step by step we, and then um, how to cook it in the Instant Pot. It's like that easy. Going to pull up my hair, wash my hands, and let's dig in so you can make Guinness Irish beef stew, Irish beef stew with Guinness, whatever you want. Okay, we're going to cut up the carrots and the celery, onions and garlic, and potatoes, and we'll get them into the Instant Pot so that they get a little bit softer while we are also cooking the meat. We'll be adding in Guinness beer, as well as a little bit of flour and a little bit of smoke flavor, potentially. That is optional and we change it up every time. It tasted like smoke flavor when we were over in Ireland and the one little lady that shared her recipe with me said sometimes they do use a little bit of smoke flavor but other times they don't I really think it depends on what they have available and you know you can make this stew your own I'm going to advise adding a little bit of brown sugar that'll take away the bitter of the Guinness but the Guinness definitely amps the flavor um, you don't want to use too much liquid in here because you want that um, liquid to go into your bowl and uh, that's about it and I'd say this is about as small as I'm going with these veggies for now, okay? And they're pretty even. I'm not too picky about that. And we'll do some celery. I do like to cut my celery smaller. My mom had this friend when she was at a luncheon and usually I'll peel celery, but I'm just going to tell you the story. They were at a ladies luncheon and the celery was not peeled and she ended up choking the host and they ended up running to the hospital because of a celery strain. So either chop that celery really small or go ahead and peel the exterior of it to get that line of ribbing off of there because it is just terrible. Okay, here is my one fun ingredient that I was directed to use and I absolutely agree. I do not know what this apple does for it, but you do want the apple in there taste is phenomenal and it does not mess with the Guinness don't worry but it definitely makes this a uh, fall dish I mean you could eat it any time of year apples are readily available but I was told did you hear me throwing the apple <laughs> um, I was told that you've got to add this in and I'm telling you this is the ingredient I had been missing so I am happy to show you that we add in apple and again, I'm no pro at chopping, but I'll show you what I do. It's really simple. It's going to cook down anyway, so nobody's going to see this because you know apples get mushy when they're cooked. So I'm just trying to make sure that it's small enough that it will keep up with the other products, right? When they cook the other ingredients. And yes, there's some skin on the apple. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, I'm running a household and trying to just get stuff done so that there's a warm meal. My family isn't picky. If yours is, clean all of it. And here we go. Here's this chopped up. Woo, done. Okay, so I'm just cutting up my potato exactly the same way that I cut everything else up. I mean, you can cut however you want. 
want. This is just me doing it, how I would do it for my family. I know you're not here watching my station to learn how to cut something. You already have your own methods, so go with it. Funny little story about that. When I went on to HSN to do a tryout, literally um, did not get the job because I couldn't cut an onion the way they wanted it cut. I was supposed to look like a professional chef, but here's the deal. You and me, we're all regular people. You don't have to be a professional chef to cook a good meal. And you know what that taught me is it's all fake and who cares? If I can, can cook it in my kitchen, I know you can cook it in your kitchen. So if you're watching me doing it, go, what is she doing? Cut it however you want. There isn't a particular science to this. This is your home, your family, and enjoy it. And just enjoy the process. Just keep your hands safe while you are slicing. So. These are rinsed and scrubbed potatoes. Just so you know that I'm not peeling them. Again, if you prefer to peel your potatoes, go right ahead. I'm here for the shortcut and to get this stuff done. There's my potato. I know you're going to ask me what meat cuts I'm using. It is beef fondue. And I have three of these packages. This one is a half pound, as is this one and this one. So I'm cooking about a pound and a half of beef fondue. Okay, so now I'm going to chop the onion, you know, the kind that I don't know how to chop professionally. And that's all good with me. I'm making it smaller so the pieces cook. Uniform without uniformity, just close enough. Hopefully this one won't make my eyes cry. I bought some the other day that were sweet and not supposed to make my eyes cry, and they did. Anyway, this is enough onion right here. And if you want, just go back through. Okay, here's my garlic. I'm using three cloves. You can use more or less, though I do not want to overpower this. It is not an Italian dish. It just needs that woody essence of the garlic. So I'm going to cut it, put it in there, and that's it. All right, let's move over to the Instant Pot. You can see I added a little water to that. I'm pressing saute and we'll have that on. And we're going to add in the onion and the garlic as you saw me chopping it. Okay, you can hear that we have officially started cooking. There is that little bit of items ingredients. Let me make sure that they're all over the bottom. Now would be the time to add pepper if you're going to add pepper. If I'm adding it, I'm doing fresh, so I will just go ahead and I like to see how much I'm putting in. That'll do for pepper. So this is what I'm using, one can of this. I'm going to start putting in a little bit right now while this begins to saute. Not much, just enough to get started. By the end, we will use all of this beer. Okay, so I'm going to add in some of the beef. I do this at the beginning with the garlic and the onion because I need the beef to, um, be cooked as well in the saute to kind of get it moving. If you remember, I said that in this recipe, you could add hickory smoke flavor, or here is the alternative. That's right, it's bacon. I take bacon bits, I microwave them, and then I put them in. The flavor is incredible, and a little bit of that bacon fat dripping is so good. So right now, once the meat has gotten to this point, this is when I add it in. And we're moving along really quickly. We've only been doing this for about 10 minutes, not even, and here we go. We're going to add in the potatoes and the corn. I'm sorry, potatoes, the carrots, the apple. I'm gonna give this a really good mix. Now, I can add brown sugar in here if I choose. So 
there, that is what it looks like. You can see that it has calmed itself down now. And because the Instant Pot is already on, it's going to come to temperature quicker, which is what I'm going for on a weeknight. Don't worry, the meat will still be pork tender. In four more ounces or so of the Guinness beer, I'll mix that and here I will add the brown sugar and then we'll add the top on and cook it. Okay, so I have an eighth of a cup. You can add more or less. I'm just going to dump that in there. And then later when I add in my tomato paste with the rest of the Guinness and a little bit of flour in this slurry that I'm going to create, the bitter will be taken out because it's already cooked. The sweet is already cooked. So I'm going to add the Guinness beer into this tomato paste, make it into a thicker paste, and then I will add a tablespoon of flour to cold water, mix that all together, and when the beef stew is done cooking, we'll leave it on saute, and we will make that thicken the stew for about 15 minutes. That's Well, I hope you really enjoyed watching this recipe for my Irish beef stew, Guinness beef stew, whatever you want to call it. Again, as a quick rundown, all of the recipe ingredients will be down in the comments section. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for some new and great recipes. Don't forget to check out my website, danavento.com. I've got a ton of recipes that are easy, just like this one, for any night of the week. And as a quick rundown of the ingredients again, we use potatoes, celery, carrot, apple, brown sugar, pepper, bacon, tomato paste, beef cubes, Guinness beer, garlic, and onion. I made it inside of an Instapot. This can be converted into your Dutch oven, and it is a wonderful, easy meal.